Hey there, welcome back to Element 4, the Amateur Extra Exam Study. And now we're going over some miscellaneous rules. So question one, on what frequencies are spread spectrum transmissions permitted? And that is only on amateur frequencies above 222 megahertz. Well, spread spectrum is just what it sounds like. It spreads the signal out, so it takes up a much larger bandwidth. Uh, one of the ones that I'm more familiar with is the frequency hopping, which sends a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And it does help for um, jamming and stuff like that. It makes it a little harder to do. Question number two, what privileges are authorized in the U.S. to persons holding an amateur service license granted by the government of Canada? The operating terms and conditions of the Canadian amateur service license not to exceed U.S. amateur extra class license privileges. So the Canadians are allowed to operate in some areas that here in the United States we are not allowed to. And so they cannot go outside of what is permitted for amateur extra class licenses. So 3.600, anything below that, they cannot use voice. So 3.603 is low as they can go. And that's just one example. They'd have to be familiar with the entire band plan. Under what circumstances may a dealer sell an external RF power amplifier capable of operation below 144 MHz if it has not been granted FCC certification? The amplifier is constructed or modified by an amateur radio operator for use at an amateur station. Now this goes back to the rules. The amplifier is constructed or modified by an amateur radio operator for use at an amateur station is part 97.315, which is certification of external RF power amplifiers. So that's where it is in the rules. Which of the following geographic descriptions approximately describes line A? It is A a line roughly parallel to and south of the border between the U.S. and Canada. And I have a picture of that right here. And this is line A. So there's some special rules if you're above line A. And that includes all of these states that are sliced right here, upper part of Michigan, almost the whole glove of Michigan all the way up to Maine. So that is line A. There are multiple lines that you have here. And that is the line that is roughly parallel to and south of the border between the U.S. and Canada. And now here's what's up with that line A. Amateur stations may not transmit in which of the following frequency segments if they are located in the contiguous 48 states and north of line A. So if you are north of this line, you're not going to be able to use the 70 or portions of the 70 centimeter band. So that's 420 to 430 megahertz. Question six, under what circumstances might the FCC issue a special temporary authority to an amateur station? That is to provide for experimental amateur communications. And you can go to the FCC and apply for that special temporary authority. And it is easily done electronically through the ULS system. When may an amateur station send a message to a business? when neither the amateur nor their employer has a pecuniary interest in the communications. It's best just to avoid it, but if you need to, you might, you know, maybe your boss has a ham radio in his office. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of. Which of the following types of amateur station communications are prohibited? Communications transmitted for hire or material compensation, 
except as otherwise provided in the rules. Now I do not have that one pulled right up in part 97, but I do know that you can sell your amateur radio gear over the airwaves, but it cannot be a regular transmission. That's It's in there. Check it out. So if I get on two meters and I say, hey, I've got a section of Roan 25 tower that I'm going to sell, and that's the only time I've ever done it, then it's it's most likely permitted. Which of the following cannot be transmitted over an amateur radio mesh network? Now, a mesh network is pretty neat. Google a mesh network. It's sort of like internet for hams, and it uses modified Wi-Fi routers. Messages encoded to obscure their meeting. So you're probably not going to be using VPNs with your amateur radio mesh network because then the messages is obscured. It's encrypted. Who may be the control operator of an auxiliary, auxiliary station? And those are technicians, generals, advanced, or amateur extra class operators. So auxiliary station. Out of these choices, it is these folks right here. Now, three of those you can test for, technician, general, or amateur extra class operators. While advanced is no longer being offered, there are still quite a few people that hold on to that advanced license because you can't get them anymore. And the last question, which of the following best describes one of the standards that must be met by an external RF power amplifier if it is to qualify for a grant of FCC certification. It must satisfy the FCC's spurious emission standards when operated at the lesser of 1500 watts or its full output power, whichever comes first. So there, if it can go to 3000 watts, then 1500 watts. If it is only a 300 watt amp, then that's at full power. And you can find that also in part 97.317. And those are the standards for your RF power amplifiers. Alrighty, we've made it through sub element one of element four, of the extra exam license. I hope this has been helpful. And if, it, if you like these videos, please hit that like button, the arrow, uh, the thumbs up button. And if you're enjoying this, please subscribe to W1RCP's channel to show support. I'm W1RCP73.